All right, so I love lightning talks, in case you guys didn't know that. I live for lightning talks. I can sit all day in the room full of lightning talks. In fact, we're going to put together a conference called Lightning Conf, but that's a whole other talk. But a couple of uh, LA Ruby meetups ago, somebody did two lightning talks, and I thought, two lightning talks? Well, I got to do three. So today I'm going to actually do three lightning talks. And so this first one is intended for beginners and novices because we don't seem to have enough people participating. And we all think we know all about Ruby already. And those of us who are really, really cool, we don't want to talk about how we don't know things. So the idea is Ruby made simple, one in a series that I hope that other people will hear will rise up and create a five minute talk about some simple idea having to do with Ruby. So I'm Ron Evans, I'm Dead Program, I'm with the Hybrid Group, if you didn't know that already, and this is Ruby Made Simple, one in a series, which I'm expecting some of the Ruby, Rubyati here in this room to come along and create something. So let's talk about if. So what about if, right? You think you know if. Well, no programming language that is an imperative kind of programming language, such as Ruby, Python, Perl, etc. Not, in other words, not functional languages. These languages that we're talking about, such as Ruby, have something called conditionals. And a conditional is simply deciding whether if it's good, then do something. Otherwise, do something else because it's bad. So what about if? Well, let's take a look at if. Simply enough, here's a very simple if 1 is equal to 1, then puts no way. So this is just simply saying that if the number 1 is equal to the number 1, then we're going to put, yeah, sure, let's say yes. Yes, true. True that. All right, so, and we save it, and we say yes. If 1 is 1, which is true, then we put tr true that, and we see true that. So 1 is equal to 1, right? Simple enough. So what if we want to say if something or else something? We could say if 1 is equal to 2, which we know is not true, and we say puts no way, right? So if we look at this, we say if 1 is equal to 2, we can't, well, 1 is not equal to 2, is it? There's really no way that 1 could be equal to 2. Well, let's run it and see. Well, true that. In other words, we did not put no, no way, because since 1 is not equal to 2, we ignored this part of the code here, and we jumped on to the else. Okay, so if something, then we do that. Else, we do something else. Right? Simple enough. All right, so let's move along. So what if we need to decide that if 1 is equal to 2, we put no way. Else if, which in Ruby says that we're going to compare this other condition. So we'll say if 2 is equal to 3, and we're going to say puts, uh-uh, nope. Right? So again, let's look at this closely. We're saying here if the first thing, which is clearly not true, so Ruby says, uh-uh, no way, skips right past it. Else if 2 is equal to 3, which is also not true, so we're going to skip past that. So we're going to, if Ruby is intelligent, it's going to say once again true that. And it does. So let's prove that it's actually running something. True yes. True yes. All right. So we now know if, else if, and else. And we see it's kind of wandering through these three different conditions, all right? So really cool thing about Ruby is we can put the if after the thing we want to do. Whoa, you could put the thing after you what the thing is you want to do. And you see this a lot. You say puts, in this case, let's use raise. In Ruby, raise is a keyword that raises an exception. It says, I can't go any further. All hell is broken loose. Just stop right now and save me, rescue me. All right, so let's say raise error. If 1 is equal to 2, right? Now, do we think this is actually going to raise an error? No, because 1 is not equal to 2. But if we say that if 1 is equal to 1, we raise that error. So we can see with Ruby is really cool. You can switch things. You could say, if something, do it. Or we could say, do something if that thing is true. And this is a very nice thing to do when you, you probably see this in Rails 
where you say raise, I can't do it if I can't find, you know, if not found, for example, you see these kind of idioms all the time. All right, so what if I want to say not? If I want to say if one is not equal to one, right, then put something, put yo, right? Well, that's kind of cool. We don't do anything. Oh, well, why don't we say if, unless one is not equal to one. Unless in Ruby is a shortcut, because we often see this uh, idiom in Ruby where we say, if not something, then go do it, right? Well, we could say unless one is equal to one, meaning if one is not equal to one, of course that's not gonna work, but we could say unless one is not equal to one, then it will do it. So it's just a way of getting rid of the need to say if not, not, which is really confusing when you're reading code and code is supposed to be easy to read, right? All right, last thing about if. There's a thing called the ternary operator, which you see and you go, what the heck is that thing? Well, we might say puts hello, and then we see a question mark by itself. Whoa, what's that mean? Well, puts hello if one is equal to one, or rather, let's, let's do it a little differently. Let's just say this condition, if we say one is equal to one, then we're going, if that is true, then puts, whoops, yes. Otherwise, puts no. So what is this doing? This is saying that if this thing up here is true, before the question mark, then return this, else returns this. All right, let's see it run. So it's actually the same equivalent of saying if one is equal to one puts yes, else puts no. And you see how it saves a lot of lines. You see this often in idiomatic Ruby. The thing is it's a little confusing. So when you see these things munged together and you see question marks and lots of colons, maybe that's not the best way to use it. But now you've seen actually seven different ways to use if in the negation form, if you say unless, saying if, else, saying is, if, else, if, else. So now you have seven different ways to use if. So go out and write some Ruby using if. Thank you. And we want to help gather people to contribute, so Ruby Made Simple is where we're going to mount all these videos up as soon as they're recorded. And I expect a member of this group to come and do a five-minute talk about some simple and yet cool aspect of Ruby for the next LA Ruby Meetup. Thank you.